welcome to uh, Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, let's open in prayer. God, we thank you tonight for this opportunity to come before you. Watch, God, that we might be found worthy to stand and present to the people on tonight. Pray you bless upon our meeting, God. We ask that you would forgive me of my sin and those that are present and those that are attentive. Pray, God, that you forgive us all of our sins, that we might be found worthy to receive. Now fill us with your Holy Spirit, God, that we might be able to communicate the good things, God, that will uh, lend to a better quality of life, God, as we embrace you as our God. We love you and praise your holy name. It's in Jesus' name we ask it all. Amen. Amen. Uh, we had begun uh, on Sunday a new series of preaching uh, and teaching uh, entitled No Greater Love and began to uh, talk about uh, the love of God and uh, the love of Jesus that he had for his disciples. We want to kind of continue tonight and over the next few weeks dealing with this idea of uh, God's love uh, <clears throat> for us. And so uh, when we think of God's love, we don't have to uh, look far to have it defined for us uh, because God's love for us is always in action. He's always proving, he's always demonstrating his love for us. And when we think about the, the love of God, there are words that uh, come to mind uh, that are synonymous with his love. God is compassionate. Uh, compassion is a component of God's love. Compassion is a byproduct of God's uh, love. God is able to feel for you because of his compassion. He's gracious. God is full of, of grace. And grace is a byproduct of his love. God is long-suffering. Uh, the fact that God is patient and uh, long-suffering is proof that he, he loves us and he's plenteous in, in mercy and in truth. And so these, these are uh, words that describe God's love. When we think about God, compassion comes to mind. Grace comes to mind. Long suffering comes to mind. Mercy and truth uh, come to mind. These are components of his, his love. And so uh, we, we, we know God loves us because of what he's doing relative to those words that I spoke. He's compassionate. That's how we know he loves us. He's gracious. That's how we know he, he loves us. And, and, and tonight, I want to just kind of zoom in on a great character in the Bible, David, who is going through uh, a tough time appeals to God's love. In other words, David, David has enough gumption to, to basically say, God, prove that you love me. Prove that you love me by doing some things. And, and so I want to just examine briefly tonight Psalm 86. It is a psalm of, of David and I want to begin with uh, verse 10 and th th this is a psalm uh, that David expresses or he sings to uh, foster God's compassion toward him. Look at what he says in verse 10. He tells God, he's talking to God, for thou art great and doest wondrous things. 
Thou art God alone. And so David, he's, he, you can tell it's a private moment between him and, and God. And he just expresses to God how he feels. He says, thou art great. And you do wondrous and great, great things. There's none like you. You're in a class all by yourself. You're God alone. And then verse 11, he says, teach me thy way, O Lord. I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart to fear thy name. Ah, look at this. Look at this psalm that David expresses. He wants to be like the God that he's speaking uh, he says, teach me. I want to learn from you, God. Teach me to be like you. I want to walk in your truth. I'm not concerned with the word, what the world says about me. I'm concerned with what you say about me. I'm, I'm concerned. I want to walk in thy truth and unite my heart to fear thy name. I got a lot of things going on in my heart, David says, but I needed to be centered. I needed to be united in my reverence for you. Can we, can our hearts be divided? Yeah, it can be divided. Remember, the heart is the seat of our emotions, where, where love comes from. It comes out of our heart. And can our hearts be divided at times? David says, I don't want to be divided. I want my heart to be united in fear, in reverence of you. And then I love, I love the conclusion that David comes up with in verse 12. He says, I will praise thee. A God that's all of that, what other conclusion can you come, come up with? He says, I will praise thee, O Lord, my God, with all my heart, and I will glorify thy name forever more. You know, I told you, this is, a, this is a psalm where David is in distress. But the way David writes, he doesn't sound like he's in distress. reason why he doesn't sound like he's in distress is because he's in communion. He's in conversation. He's in worship with, with God. And so, so there is no fear in the presence of God of God. There is no, you know, no, no being stressed out when we're pouring ourselves to God. David says, I will praise thee, O Lord my God, with all my heart. See, in order, I love this what David does. He said, before I praise you with all my heart, I first need you to unite my heart. I need you to get rid of those things, God, that separate me from you. Those things that are distractions. Those things that I have a priority to, to rise right. I need you to get rid of those things or help me to get those things in the right order in my life. I want you to be number one. I need my heart to be united in you. David says, that being said, I can praise you with all my heart. And I will glorify thy name forevermore. Look at what he says. For great is thy mercy toward me, and thou hast delivered my soul from the Lord's hell. Ah, now you see a transition taking place because David is reflecting upon where God has brought him from, and then he moves to where he is right now. Ah, that's a, that's a great formula to live by, always living in light of where God has delivered you from. You, 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 we, we shouldn't be stressed out if we reflect on what God got us out of the last time. This problem shouldn't be overwhelming to us. We ought to, we ought to be better at waiting. We ought to be more patient uh, uh, knowing God is going to do his thing in his own time. David, David says, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to reflect on where you brought me from. Thou hast delivered my soul from the lowest hell. But look at verse 14. 
not only has David had problems, he's having problems. Huh. What a great way to pray that before we approach God with our problems, we spend some time telling God how great he is. Huh? I know you got burdens. I know you got issues. I know you got trials. I know you have tribulations. But God is greater than your problems. God is greater than your brokenness. God is greater than those folk that are stressing you out. God is greater than that problem on that job. God is greater than that supervisor that can't get it straight and that you're at odds with. God is greater than that problem with your sister, with your brother, with your family members. God is greater. And so David, before he starts talking about what's wrong, he starts, he begins by talking about what's right. And guess what? If God is working in your life, if God is the center of your joy, you got going on more, you got more right going on than you do wrong going on. Yeah. Listen. David says, Thou hast delivered my soul from the Lord's hell. But then he says, right now, God, the pride are risen against me. And the assemblies of violent men have sought after my soul. David says, this, this, this people trying to kill me and have not set thee before them. Ah, God, God, God I got some folk on my trail that don't reverence you like I do. That don't see your greatness the way I do. And, and, and because because, because they don't see your greatness, they stand up. It's pride. Uh, it's pride. And it's pride uh, of these evil men has risen up against David. He says, assemblies of violent men. We're talking armies who are on the trail of David. David tells God, what's wrong in this song? He says, my enemies want to make me their footstool. My enemies, they're not playing with me. They're trying to kill me. They're trying to annihilate me. They're trying to eliminate my family name. David spends time telling God what's wrong. There's nothing wrong with us telling God what's wrong. Now, but don't, don't leave it at what's wrong. Appeal to what God has, has to offer us. David says, I got a lot going on in verse 14 that's negative, but look at verse 15. But thou, O Lord, art God full of compassion. See, you love me, and a byproduct of your love is compassion huh? and grace and long suffering, and you're plenteous in mercy and truth. Those things that we begin began with talking about what love was or what love is, what God is when we say that God loves us. He loves us. The proof that he loves us is that he does show compassion. He does uh, offer his grace. He is long-suffering, merciful, and full of truth. David knows this about God. He knows his enemies, but he knows God. And he knows that God uh, is all of this. What, what David needs now is for God to show him how much he loves. And David don't mind asking. Look at verse 16. He says, oh, turn unto me. This is what he's telling God. In other words, as if God cannot be in tune with David. But David asks him anyway. God, turn unto me. And have mercy upon me. Show, the, show your love toward me by extending mercy upon me. Look what he says. Give thy strength unto thy servant. I love this about David. David says, I don't, I'm not satisfied with my strength. Huh? Because my strength, what? Drains. You're losing. 
I don't care how full of might you are, keep on living. Huh? He becomes, David, David knows his frailties. He knows his shortcoming. He said, my strength is not enough. Give me your strength, is what David says. Give thy strength. Give me, give me your supernatural strength. Because if you give me your strength, I can hold on and I'm going to let go. Huh? If you give me your strength, I can endure that stressful situation on that job. If God gives me his strength, I can be more tolerant with, when people disagree uh, with me. If God gives me his strength, I can endure things that I wouldn't normally be able to do. David says, God, show me you love me. In verse 16, he says, show me you love me by turning to me and have mercy upon me. Give thy strength unto thy servant and save the son of thine handmaid. He says, he says, if you don't do it for me, do it for my mom. <laughs> <laughs> I love that about David where he injects uh, in his plea uh, uh, some humor. He says, God, I need you to, if I didn't have your attention, I, I need you to give me your attention. Imagine saying that to the God of the universe. God, I need you to turn and give me your attention. I need you to get, turn and give me your mercy. I need you to turn whatever you got going on. You, God, can do everything at the same time. But I need you to make sure that you turn and show it towards me. Look at what he says in verse 17. Show me a token for good that they which hate me may see it. He says, do, do good in my life so those that hate me know it's you. See, a lot of times we want God to do good in our lives, bless us, so we can look good. Huh? So, so we can look nice. So we can look, so, so we're pleasing to the eye. No, David says, I want you to do it for me. But David said, I don't want glory in it. I want people to know that you did it, that you showed compassion, that you had mercy, that you extended grace toward me. Isn't that a, isn't that a beautiful notion to think of? Uh, out of the mind of David, we see God, God showed this good in my life. Turn my circumstances uh, around. Get the hell hounds off of me. And, and, and I want everybody to know it was you. I'm not going to walk around telling folk I figured it out. Folk that I'm connected to, I made a phone call and they made it happen on my I know David said when folk try to figure out how it happened, I'm going to look up and say it was God all by himself. Ha. Huh. David, he says, the ones that, that hate me, he says, I want you to do it so they can see. Huh? So they can see and be ashamed because thou Lord has helped me and comforted me. Uh, David, we're closing tonight. He knows God loves him. And <laughs> maybe the pace at which God is showing his love, maybe it's not quick enough for David. You know, uh, David is early in his ministry in this psalm, and the patience that David would develop over time is not necessarily visible in this text. He has a, this is a come on, Lord, song. And every now and then, uh, sisters and brothers, you, you, that's the level we have to appeal to God on. Come on, Lord, don't you see me? I need you to come on. I need, I need to stop what you're doing, and I need you to turn and see about You say you love me. Come see about me. 
And David says, when you do it, because you're going to do it, I know you're going to do it because you love me. How? I'm glad God loves me. I'm glad he loves me that way. I know he's going to do it. I know he's going to fix it. I know he's going to work it out. I know he's going to uh, put me in the right place. I know he's going to keep me together. I know he's going to hold, hold me fast unto him. I know he's going to do it. And every now and then, I have to holler out and say, God, right now, David lets us know that those right now prayers, right now songs, they are right too. God bless you. May it keep you uh, is our prayer. Thank you for uh, streaming us in tonight. Those who are, uh, are listening, uh, those who are uh, part of the service on tonight, and then those that are present in the sanctuary. Uh, remember that we are uh, back to in-person Bible study every Wednesday night, and so we look forward to seeing you on next Wednesday night. I pray that it'll be in person. I want to uh, remind everybody uh, that uh, May 30th, we will reopen the church uh, with uh, uh, some new guidelines uh, that we will uh, be following, uh, different time that we're living in, so we gotta make sure that we keep everybody uh, safe. I did prepare a letter that we'll be going out to everybody, uh, laying out those guidelines so everybody can be on the same page. Uh, I ask that you be prayerful uh, about us coming back together, that God will keep us all safe from all hurt, uh, harm, or danger. Look forward to seeing you uh, this Sunday uh, uh, as we stream the service again. And those that will be present will be here uh, as, as well alongside me. And we look forward to having a shouting hallelujah time. So God bless you and may keep you uh, is our prayer. Uh, now we'll offer our final prayer. God, we thank you so much tonight for this opportunity to come before you. We pray your blessing upon each and every person that is up under the sound of my voice. We come lifting you and thanking you for being the kind of God that you are. You're full of compassion, full of mercies, truth, grace, long-suffering. God, we thank you. And, and, and as you exhibit those qualities, God, we see your love toward us, God, that it's a sacrificial love. Oh, how you love us. Help us to love you back. God, we do that by first confessing our sins. Forgive us of our sins, God, that we might be found worthy to stand in your presence. Uh, we say thank you first because you've been wonderful, you've been kind, you've been loving. You trust us. You've given things to our charge. You believed in us. And God, we just thank you for it. Not, 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 not to the point that we are finished, God, but you're still developing us. You're still making us. You're still shaping us. You're still forming us. And so, God, we, we just pray, God, that we would develop a submissive attitude, God, to be conformed into that person that you would have us to be. Thank you for your word tonight because it, it, it foreshadows your love for us. God, that it lets us know what, what your love looks like, how it's poured out into our lives. And there's no doubt about it. You love us. So thank you for your love. And pray, God, that we have the boldness of David to uh, call upon that love, to cry out, to request, God, that you would turn unto us and that you would hear our pleas and our cry, cries. And then, God, help us to be in the right mindset that when you answer those pr prayers, when you bring about deliverance, God, that we would be careful to give you the glory, that we would raise our hands and look to you, God, for had it not been you who was on our side, we shudder to think what we would become. So, God, help us to, tonight to be all that we can be, we pray, God, that as we grow and as we develop, you will remember us in every way. Remember our congregation, all of what she is, all of what she shall become. Every member, God, we pray for them. We pray for every man, every woman, every child. We pray, God, for all our ministries, the work, the labor that goes on in this church. Help us to be sanctified. Help us to grow. God, help us to uh, be better Christians. God, help us to live right. Help us to love right. Help us to love the way you love. God, that we might be well-pleasing in your sight. We love your praise all tonight, but more than anything, we pray that the outcome of it all be in accordance with your will, for you are our strength and our redeemer. It's in Jesus' name we ask it all. And all the children of God say amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. God bless you, may keep you, is our prayer.
The church I am, the church I'll be.